It's Lita again, designing on EditorX. In this class, I'm gonna show you how the real magic behind creative design is all in the details. With a little bit of scrolling animation, I turned my header into a dynamic component that also becomes the footer as you scroll the page. Since I'll only be working with one header for this, I'll start by hiding the footer. My site is gonna have five wide sections, so I'll use this blue plus icon to add another four. Now let's take a look at my added sections in the layers panel. It's a good idea to rename these so I don't get confused as I design them. Just a sec. Okay, now I want these sections to take up the entire screen. So I'll select the first one and use the inspector panel to set the minimum height to 100 viewport height. This is where I can control the exact size, position, and behavior of any element on my site because I'm a control freak. I'll keep using the layers panel to choose my sections and continue to adjust each minimum height. I highly recommend doing it this way instead of selecting them from the canvas when you have a lot of sections to work with. Okay, remember these colorful titles I had stacked on the side of my page? To do that, I need to add a vertical section by clicking on this gray area outside of my canvas and then using the blue plus icon. I'll have five different titles, so let's divide the section into five by applying a grid. You can choose one of the existing options here or customize your own. I'll make this one one column by five rows. I want each grid row to match the height of one of the horizontal sections, so I'll click adjust to edit my grid and set the minimum height of each row to 100 viewport height. Let's just set the width of the vertical section to, let's go to 315 pixels and my site layout is basically set. Okay, this is where things are gonna get interesting. It's time to start designing the header. Gotta get rid of this logo placeholder first. Before I do anything else, I need to set the scroll effect of my header to fixed and make it overlap the next section. This step is key to making our design work, so you don't wanna miss this step. This means the header will stay in a fixed position and the sections below are gonna move underneath it as you scroll. All right, let's add some color to this thing. From the floating action bar, I'm gonna to go to design and choose a custom color. I don't usually memorize hex codes, but this bright yellow is one of my favorites and it's pretty easy to remember. There's no such thing as too bright, right? Then I'm gonna select this default menu here and from the inspector panel, I'm gonna center it, set the width to 100% and height to 100 pixels. Make sure the margins are set at zero and that it's docked to the center. Now it'll stretch across my entire header. Okay, let's start customizing the contents of my menu. I'll select manage menu show pages, and now I can choose the site pages I want to add to it. This page will actually be more of a profile than a home page, so let's go ahead and rename it. You can also use these four dots on the left to drag and rearrange your order. Now I'm ready to start customizing the design. From the floating action bar, I'll select layouts to align the text to the middle and toggle this on so the items stretch to fit the whole menu. Great. Now let's go to design and choose a font that's a bit more my style. I'll go with this one, set the font size to let's say 40 pixels and set the text color to black. You can even customize the hover and clicked text color, but for now we'll stick with black. The rest of my site is gonna make up for this, trust me. Now I'll start adding some of my favorite images to each section. I've already uploaded them to my media, so I'll just grab one from the add panel and stretch it to fill the entire section. I've saved you the time and added the rest of them to my site using the same steps. 
My vertical section needs a little bit of love. First, I'll grab a container from the quick add tab of the add panel to save time. Then I'll go to the design and remove these borders. You already know how particular I am about color, so I've already set up my custom shades here. We're gonna start with this lovely purple. Next, I'll head back to the add panel to grab a text box and drag it in. Let's rename it, change the font to match the header, and set the font size to 30. This text is what will appear at the bottom of the container under each title, so I'll dock it to the left and bottom and set the left and bottom margins to 30 pixels. Let me show you how to set up another container just once so you get the gist of it. Once you have this down, you can go wild and style your section however you want. I'll use these three dots to duplicate the container. Then I'll release the docking and reset the margins to zero. To move this container to the second row of our grid, I'll use the grid area section of the inspector panel. This container will remain in the first column, so we'll leave it at one to two, but it'll start from the second row, so we'll set that from two to three. Then we're gonna stretch the container to fit the entire grid cell. All that's left is to edit the text with the next title and change the container color to this custom blue. Okay, so now that I've got all my containers set up, I just wanna point something out about this last one. For this container, we'll place the text a bit differently. I'll set the bottom margin to 100 pixels to leave space for the header when it shifts down to become the footer. Now I need to add a button that will serve as the first title in my vertical section. I'll select the section using these blue breadcrumbs and add a button from the floating action bar. You can see that the button was added to the middle of the grid, but I wanna move it to the top. I know what you're thinking, just drag it there. But actually, if I were to drag it to the top, the button would attach to the container, and it's important that it remains attached to the section. This way, the button won't be pushed off screen when we reach the end of its container as we scroll. You can see this relationship clearly in the Layers panel. See how the button appears as a child of the section? Editor X actually has a great video tutorial in their academy about parenting and hierarchy if you want to brush up on this. Anyway, to move the button to the top, I need to adjust the grid area from row one to two. Now I'm going to set the top margin to 100 pixels, adjust the minimum height and width, and set the scroll effect to sticky so the rest of the titles will stack beneath it as you scroll. Let's edit the design by changing the color setting the font size, choosing a font, and removing these borders. Okay, now I just need to rename it. I think we're getting somewhere. Before we continue with our vertical section, let's take another look at the header. We've already set it to fixed, and now we'll just fine tune the animation. Under scroll, let's toggle on this transition and set the direction downwards. For the distance, you're going to want to use 100 viewport height minus the viewport height of your header. This will make sure the header will fit exactly into place as a footer. I'll set the delay to 0.5 seconds, the duration to two, and choose an ease type. This will give the scroll a subtle dynamic feel as it starts slow in the beginning, speeds up towards the middle, and slows down again at the end. Let's hit preview to see where we're at. Okay, it's really starting to come together. I'm gonna to show you how to duplicate the button just once so you can get the hang of it. You know, the drill. I'll use the three dots again to duplicate the button, adjust the grid area to start from row two to three, and set the margins to zero. Okay, this next part might seem complicated, but it's really just simple math. For this button, I'm gonna set the top offset to 100 pixels so that it sticks 100 pixels below the top of the page and exactly under the first button. But that means that the next button I add will have a top offset of 200 pixels, the one after that 300 pixels, and so on. Next, I'm gonna choose another custom color for this button, and I will rename it 
Okay, great. Now all of my buttons are set up. Let's just make some final design tweaks. I'll spare you the repetition, but I added some text to each container and even color coordinated them to match the title buttons that they belong to. And that's it. Told you it was all in the details. Check out my other class to see how you can get creative with Sticky Position on EditorX.